the Lent period, 40 days of fasting, ends with Easter. But two days prior to that is Good Friday. The 14th station ends with the body of Jesus Christ being brought down and the pain, the trauma of the mother as she holds her dead son on her lap. And this Good Friday is venerated in Goa as in the world by enacting the bringing down of the body of Jesus Christ from a huge cross, a life-size body made of wood. And when I came here, I found this body and what I have been told, and this is something amazing again, rest of the uh, images that I have seen, which are brought down from the cross, are rigid wooden uh, bodies. But here I have been told that this body, wherever there were joints, the hands, the neck, had a canvas, so it could actually move, his hands could be moved, the neck would fall down. So beautiful. I want you to see this body which is called as Cristo Morto or Christ who has died. It's been kept beautifully over here. Let's take a closer look. Every place of religion, they say cleanliness is next to godliness. Here too, behind me you can see a niche. Earlier we used to call it a kurkut. And inside there is a granite basin where the water was stored. And there is a tap over here and they could wash their hands over here. Amazing way of cleaning up your hands. There is a custom when you enter the house of God, a church or a chapel, you always make the sign of the cross. And for that, the holy water is kept very close to the entrance. And here we can see a big shell which is to hold the holy water. There is another one of granite and at the main entrance, there is a huge shell. So walking in these aisles with Autobab, I came across a set of chairs. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very difficult to get this type of carved furniture. Autobab, can you tell us that what I see over here, the netting, doesn't look uh, new. What is it made of? Cane. It's called Rotia sound. This is called as Rotia sound. Rotia sound, made of cane. cane. So, so basically they took a fine slice out of the cane, yeah, the cane yeah. and they wove, yeah, this. they wove this. When you sit on these chairs for hours, you don't feel hot. Sometimes, if you sat on this chair for a long time, you would fall asleep. But there is something else that Autobab wanted to show me, and that is this casket over here or a cupboard over here. What about, can you tell us something more about this? This is called the Bau. Uh, and there are uh, very few pieces like this left in Goa now. Very few. This, is, this was normally for the priest's uh, vestments to be kept inside. Okay, so his robes yeah, his were robes kept over pieces, here. His vestments were kept in this. Okay. Uh, this piece is very old. This is over 200 years old, maybe more than but what are these white white things that we yeah, see? This is all um, engraved uh, with uh, ivory or camel bone. And okay. they say that this was made by the artisans from Benauli. That's from what, Benauli. That's what they yes. say. Yes. Two pieces of this left in gold. So if you have a bow in your house, 
do not ever sell it or give it protect it when i when you see the close up of this you will understand why me i am passionate and he he is very possessive about it but look at it ladies and gentlemen wherever you are in the world if you belong to the christian faith i am sure you have got a cross and many of you may have this structure the body of jesus christ on the cross but why am i giving so much of importance to this particular cross because this is the first time in my life first time and i'm sure many many of you wherever you may be it will be the first time in your life when you see that this particular cross has got two bodies one this side and one this side replica so when they took this in procession possibly the people in front as well as the people behind both could view this body what about this has also come down from earlier time yes 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 this is all very very old as as old as the chapel itself as old as the chapel itself such a beauty such a beauty ladies and gentlemen i have always been telling you please protect preserve and promote the goan heritage the first part of it is protect such type of things are always eyed by people whom we don't like please take care of the various artifacts that are there in your house as well as in your religious houses like the churches uh, the chapels and temples and shrines wherever but when you see something like this appreciate appreciate those goan artisans who have left for our eyes a feast of such a beauty in your dressing room i'm sure you have a mirror and if there is a high di uh, difference between you and your spouse you have a problem because you want the mirror higher and she wants it lower now here i am also standing in front of a mirror but i cannot see my face i can only see from here and below you think there is a reason why i am standing here yes there is because this particular mirror please get one for yourself don't take it from here but get one for yourself because this is an adjustable mirror because if i want to see myself i just press it down a little bit and here i am and if your spouse is shorter tilt it the other way round she gets into the mirror so as far as possible appreciate the beauty of the artisans who created such marvels where one mirror adjusts to the full family you must have seen in the chapels and the churches that they have got a procession whenever they have their feast they have a procession they go around the village heralding the joyful news to the entire village and you will always find that the procession is led by a person who is holding a cross and also behind the idol or the icon is carried under a canopy and another cross is being carried by somebody else now here you can see this two made of silver and being used in this chapel the main part of the church proceedings or the rituals one of the main is the monstrance you can see how beautiful this one is whenever you go to a chapel or a church for a mass when the ritual is going on you will find that the priest holds this and he blesses the entire congregation by lifting it up and blessing all the people who are there but this is the most holy aspect of the church rituals
When I came to this chapel of Nossa Senhora da Piedad, at the entrance I found two marble plaques and those marble plaques were dated 15th April 1885. Now, anyone could have written the date there, but the things that are related to that era, I found it inside. The first printing press in India was in Goa. The Goa State Museum tells us a history that it was actually on its way to Ethiopia, but there was war in Ethiopia. So they carried it with them when they came down here to Goa. And then once it came to Goa, it was shifted to the College of St. Paul. Sadly, today there is only an arch left over there. And this printing press was kept there. Then it was shifted to Rashol. And I found a Bible called as Corporis Christi, written in Latin and with block printing. Not only this, ladies and gentlemen, these books were considered very sacred. And some of the books had a locking system. They could lock this. Today, some of the locks are missing, but they could lock it up and keep it. And we also found other books where the notes of the music, or in Konkani, we call it solfa, are written down over here. So you can see how well they documented each and every aspect. See how old this book looks. And this is what being sacred. Save what has been there in Goa. This is the treasure that belongs to you, to me, and to the generations that are going to come in. Hi. 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 You are Abigail. Yes. And you are an angel. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? I am in the presence of an angel. And we have got Abigail here. Do you all watch my program? Yes. Where do you see the program? On the TV. On the TV? Wow. I have got two fans over here and one of them is an angel. Can you believe it? Keep on watching my going along with this generation.
So we have now come to the end of this episode of the Indo-Portuguese house so beautifully kept by the Oliver Fernandes family and it is time that we say thank you to one of the most dynamic persons family member and an heir to this beautiful lineage Mr Otto Oliver Fernandes Ladies and gentlemen the time has come I have been waiting to pounce on a gentleman called as Otto Oliver Fernandes every person i spoke to that was the common name and also he is the youngest of the siblings so most loved as the batkar of the old days were sitting on a balkan after a good meal here we manage to corner otobab and here he is otobab welcome to my program called as my goyam thank you sir all the time that we have been in your place we have been showered with amazing hospitality by everyone from your family in this place the upkeep of this house has been credited to you what are the troubles that you have gone through in trying to maintain this house which is one of the classic examples of indo portuguese architecture well it is you know there are pros and cons living in such houses uh, the maintenance is very high and as you know you don't get any local labor anymore so we have got about six uh, living maids that are all from outside uh, goa and uh, as regards to the animals that you see this always been my uh, my uh, childhood passion i have a great love for animals and for plants and uh, i have about almost 200 pets here in this house oh wow yeah and uh, almost double of uh, that uh, what are they they are like dogs the swans. i have i have five dogs i have australian swans i have turkeys i have geese i have guinea fowls i've got different types of hens and birds and in my farm in bedshi i have almost double what about you have got a, a a facet in the jewel that we known as auto which deals in the tourism sector of goa and you are one of the main person who handles all the passenger liners that come into goa Uh, would you like to tell us something about that? Yeah, I've been handling uh, cruise ships for the last thirty years, mm -hmm. and I handle most of the cruise ships that come into Goa. Uh, as you know, they come for a day. They come in the morning and they leave in the evening, and uh, sometimes we have to move about three thousand people all over Goa. Three thousand. Three thousand people in a day. In a day. Oh. So we take them to various places. We take them. Uh, we have various tours. We have uh, the cultural tours that show them. Uh, the um, old heritage sites old goa churches and the temples and then uh, we take them for lunches to the spice uh, spice farms and i have added a special tour wherein i bring in people here to visit this house uh, we call it the uh, uh, heritage tour with an invitation for a high tea to a goan home okay so uh, just to give them uh, an idea of what goans are and how, how they live you know it's very important these people that are coming they are really not interested in seeing the the beach and things like that because you know they have fantastic beaches back home so what we have to emphasize is on the culture that goa has got to offer and for this the youth can start something that can you know um, come up with different uh, tours like um, you know heritage walks and uh, even village walks and uh, things that are you know not normally um, published uh, in a um, normal uh, course of the day we have a huge potential according to you for tourism in goa what is your advice for people who are having such wonderful houses mansions properties heritage houses plantations what, what is your advice to them see not all can uh, afford to maintain such houses 
you know, they are now they become like white elephants. Mm -hmm. It's it takes it's quite a drain on the pocket. So if the government could, uh, you know, encourage uh, in, uh, you know, in uh, and uh, give them some subsidies uh, for the upkeep of these houses and uh, and promote them, you know, that would help a lot. That would help a lot. That would help a lot. Okay. What has been voiced by Mr. Otto Fernandez is a same view that has been viewed, spoken by n number of people in the tourism industry who says they are interested, but the local administration must put out their hand and extend assistance. I, I'm, I'm really thankful to uh, Autobab for voicing this because today there is a need in Goa for people who have the wish to do something to come forward and put up proposals. Ask for help and people like me will support you. Right now, after a good feasting, I think we have troubled Autobab and his family quite a lot. Let us bid goodbye to him and thank him and I'm sure that you will be part of a journey that he has, which he calls as the tour of heritage tour. Tour of heritage with high tea. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm 200%, no, I think I'll change that, 300% sure that you step into this house, when you go back, your plans of building your house is going to change. So, Autobab, thank you so much for thank spending you, the time you, and inviting thank us. Thank you, Sanjeeva. Yeah. It was a real pleasure to have you and uh, wish you all all the best in your episodes. Thank you. Thank you. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this episode, where we have brought you to the home of the Oliver Fernandez family and their house, their lovely house. And we reached on this day when they were celebrating the feast of Nossa Senhora the Piedad in their private chapel in Mercedes. And you have seen the chapel and the feast being held in the chapel. And then we came back like all goans and there was a food. No, I wouldn't call it a food. There was a feast of all Goan dishes. We enjoyed that. Me and my cameraman enjoyed that. But this is not about the two of us enjoying. It's about you coming into Goa, enjoying such lovely heritage houses, the food, authentic Goan food, vegetarian, the way the locals cook it, non-vegetarian, the way the locals cook it, as well as the Indo-Portuguese uh, style or the Portuguese style, and the seafood. But I can tell you one thing, every house that we have been to, the warmth has touched all of us, and I'm sure that warmth has passed on to all of you, wherever you are in the world. We would like to get you so many of these things over here in this land called as Goa. And for that, you will have to write to us on the email that you see over here. We will definitely get back to you. Whether you have got a feast or whether you have got something unique in your place or something that is like this, the house, write to us. The email that you see again is the, uh, is the way that you can get to us. So, with a big thanks to the Oliver Fernandez family, signing off from this episode.